Hey, you guys. All right. So for any of you guys who don't like being on camera, I get it. I was just the top, like my head was, on, my hair was on the top of my head and um, I was in my pajamas, but I needed to record this podcast and we're doing this thing on YouTube and Facebook now. So I had to put on some makeup. My roots. That's what I see. I see my roots I'm getting done on Wednesday, but I'm just letting you know that I am not above all of the like hesitations that go on in my head my daughter is also outside my room so I'm really hoping that uh she's not going to come in here and interrupt um if she does it's not the end of the world so I have a podcast producer but let me go remind her before you and I start this is all that happens behind the scenes you guys hold on hey Olivia I am going to start recording the podcast now okay so you can get her to file You cannot join me, sweetheart. Okay? I'll be done in like 20 minutes. Uh, it's Bella and your business, yes. Okay? It's going to be a video on teaching people something. But I got to do it now, okay? I'm already recording. Okay. All right, I love you. I know all of you other work from home parents can totally understand that. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my notes out because I thought my notes were out, but when I first started this, my camera wasn't working. And I think last year or last, last week, you guys saw that um, the recording wasn't actually the entire podcast because I had tech problems, right? So now what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling up episode 304. You guys want to know what it is? It's episode 304 and it is um uh hold on here we go boom um it is my phone has been making these dings and I don't know what they are I don't know where this sound has come from okay uh it is episode 305 four hiring questions to separate the good from the great pet sitters and I'm also creating a little content right here on Instagram how I always do so what's up Instagram land um, that is part of being, you know, squeezing the lemons as I teach, you know, like trying to create content everywhere. And so it's just kind of, it's a good friendly reminder for my Instagram people that, uh, we have a podcast, right. And it's kind of behind the scenes. And then you really get the behind the scenes. If you're watching this right now, if you're watching this right now, tell me who you are and where are you from? I want to know, I love getting to know you guys. Um, because it just, it helps me so much in everything that I do. Okay. So we're going to get started and I'm going to start this out and we're just going to get straight into it. I'm actually excited for this one. It's a really good topic. Welcome to another episode of Bella in your business. My name is Bella Vasta and today, oh my gosh, we're going to continue on this train of hiring great employees because it's pretty tough, right? And I, th I think every single small business um, deals with this. It doesn't matter if you're in the pet sitting business or not. Uh, you could be in the housekeeping industry where I have just recently started to gain a lot of friends and followers. Um, but this, these are tried and true um, things that we're going to be talking about today about basically how to separate your interview questions to get from the good people to the great people. The And, and I'm really curious if you guys have any feedback or you have found anything while you're interviewing that has been really great. Now, before I get into this, I want to stress that higher, asking the right questions is pivotal in finding someone. So a lot of the times people are like, oh, I don't want to hire or I keep hiring bad people or nobody wants to work. And my first question is, what is your responsibility in that? Did you ask the right questions? Did you think ahead of time enough about the exact kind of person you're looking for and then pinpoint situational or questions that, that you needed to ask them? And the tricky part about this is you can't just come out and ask a question because it's kind of like, think about if you're a lawyer, it's like a leading question. And then people start to understand, oh, this is the right answer. And I'm just going to give you lip service. So when you give more thought provoking questions that almost sometimes do not have a definite yes or no answer, there is not a right or wrong answer. It makes it a little bit more um, abstract. And it also um, gets the person talking themselves up on a mountain, a pedestal, or into a hole. <laughs> and I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about that today. But, you know, questions, especially if you're hiring employees, things like, 
what would you do if you walked in and a dog was panting on the floor? My question bet to you would be, I don't know what the handbook says. You're going to train me on that. So there's a difference too in questions, whether or not you're hiring for an employee versus an independent contractor, an IC. An IC, you want them to come to you knowing everything already. You want them to have their own business, have their own methods, and, and they have the knowledge. An employee, you're molding them into how you want them to be through your training and your coaching. OK, and so I really want you to just understand those two mindsets right there. And uh, if this is your first time joining me, you will not know this, but I'm going to tell you is that I am a big proponent for employees. And I actually think employees cost less than ICs because most of the time people are paying ICs way too much. And any time, like the liability with ICs, if they don't have their own independent insurance, is just astronomical. Like who wants to sleep with one eye open at night wondering if they're going to have a lawsuit on their hands or a big bill to pay? Workman's compensation helps you so much when you have employees. So I digress. We're going to get back into four hiring questions to separate the good from the great pet sitters, dog walkers, housekeepers, whoever you are. So first ask the what would you do questions, even though I just said not to but in a sticky situation with not obvious answer. So it's like, wow, well, I could see this going one of two ways and I can argue it one of two ways. Good, argue it. Tell me your thought process. And so a, a situational question like this where there's two really good answers or the answer isn't obvious, the, the, the answer, the response that you're looking for is the critical thinking, the problem solving skills, figuring out what would they put in their hierarchy of needs and would that line up with what you're looking for? Let me give you an example. Uh, you're on the way to a doctor's appointment, right? It's a doctor's appointment. You can't be late for that. Uh, and you've been waiting that you've been waiting nine weeks for <laughs> on top of that, right? So it's a really important doctor's appointment. But you're leaving your neighborhood and you see a loose dog. What would you do? And so for my pet sitters and dog walkers out there, you know, it, it, it's a moral dilemma a little bit, right? Like, do you save yourself and get to this appointment because what is it for? Or do you like put the dog in your car and take him to the appointment with you? Do you take the dog and like run him back home, throw him in a crate and come back and deal with it later? Do you just keep driving by and you, you pretend like, oh, whatever, someone else will help him. There are so many different like realities to that. I mean, depending on the day or the time of day or whatever, or time of year, you might be able to put them in your car and leave them in your car while you're in the doctor's office with the windows cracked. If it's like, you know, a 50, 60 degree day, who knows? But that's the thing, who knows? And I wanna know, and I wanna get to understand the way that your problem solving, your critical thinking, your thought process leads you to. Now, no matter what industry you're listening to this right now, you can easily adapt something like this to that. And now the biggest important thing if you've been with me for a while, you might've heard this, or if you've taken the employee quick start program, how to get employees within 30 days or less, you're going to already know this. But my dad taught me this. My dad was a district manager for toy companies, like his whole life. We had like the best toys as kids. And um, he called it the, um, the, the, the drink test. And so what we would do, I mean, I have a coffee in my hand right now. I don't have a straw, but you would ask a question and then start drinking stick the straw in your mouth, stick the bottle in your mouth, start drinking. Basically, excuse me, but shut up. <laughs> because I think one of the things that we do as interviewers, we're very nervous and we end up talking it all out with them. But what you really want to do is you don't want to lead them anywhere. You want to just ask the question and end with a question mark and that's it and be quiet. Some things that you can say during this is, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Oh, so how, why do you think that? Um, have you ever had a situation like this? You can ask those like, and the Socratic method, which I really love is um, someone would be like, yeah, so I would, you know, put the dog in my car and take him to work. Oh, you would put the dog in your car. And so all you're doing is parroting back what they said to you. And it basically is another word of saying, go on. <laughs> and remember how I said, you can talk them to a pedestal or, you can, or they can talk themselves into a hole. And so I want you to really consider that. Okay, the next one, it's what does this job mean for my life? That's kind of the question that you're asking them. 
So you're like, what does this job mean to you? Like, what, why would it benefit your life doing this job? And because um, things like pet sitting, dog walking, even housekeeping, it's, it's kind of like a lifestyle. It's not a normal, like I'm going to be a cashier and clock in and clock out, right? Like you have to really like it. You can't fake it. You can't fake it at all. And so what does this job mean for your life? Um, it's going to be like, where are, what place of life are they in, right? Are they in a transition? Is their life um, not stable? Are they in between jobs? Are they just looking for some place to hire them so they can make money because they're, they're in desperate needs or they're in survival mode right now? Are they in a good solid place in their life where they're going to be a good long-term employee for you if you're looking for long-term? You know, are they going to college at the end of the summer and they're going to be gone? Um, and that's not always a bad thing because then they also come back, you know, usually during December and spring break and all those other things. So you got to figure out like where they are in their place of life. And I think that's one thing a lot of interviewers don't do when we're interviewing for a service-based business. Um, are they with you for a season, a reason, or a lifetime kind of situation? And ask them to expand on it. Again, the best way to do this is that Socratic method. Oh, and you know, and then the end of the summer, I'm going to school. Oh, you're going to school. Yeah, I'm going to XYZ college and I'm studying this, and but I really don't know if I like it. And and like things will just come out. People will start singing, they'll start talking. And then what you've got to do is take that answer and and line it up, what you've already predetermined is something that you actually want in your life. Do you want, is that who you're looking for? If you have not identified that, then this is not gonna be helpful to you, anything that I'm saying right now. So I want you to consider that. Now, the other question, um, and it kind of relates a little bit, but it's often missed. And it's basically like, it, it It will avoid those situations, you guys, when you're like, oh my God, they quit after two months. And then you're like, I can't believe I spent all that on training them and you know, investing in them and all this stuff. But how long can they predict their current availability? So that looks like, okay, great, Bella. Um, all right, so this it shows that your availability is Monday through Friday from 10 to four. Um, is there anything coming up that you anticipate that changing? No. Okay. That's a yes. No question. Cool. Then you can also say, um, how long can you predict that this is going to be your availability? It's the same question, just asked a different way. And you're looking for some, you're probably looking for, I would be looking for, um, yeah, I don't see anything in the foreseeable future. This is kind of my life. You know, my husband does this and my kids are doing this. And, you know, this is the time that I can do things. And, it doesn't, you know, and then they usually start talking more about their life situation. So I think the one thing is like, you know, you're like, oh my God, I hired this awesome person, but now their availability changed. Well, did you ask, you know, they put down their availability, but did you ever investigate how permanent that availability is? Again, is it a summer job or is it just in between jobs or is it something that they can commit to for a really long time? In my former company that I had for 14 years, I used to ask people, First, it was a year, but then I went down to six months and it was, it was just a formality. It wasn't anything it could actually hold people to. Right. But the act of doing it made them really think hard. And I said, are you willing to commit to six months with my company if I hire you? Because my clients like to know their pet sitters. That, that's how it was. And, you know, sometimes when we got to that stage of the onboarding process, when they actually had to sign that and give it to me, they really had to consider it and put their money or their mouth where they're signature is, so to speak, they were like, Bella, you know what? I actually have this other thing that I didn't tell you about that's coming up. And I, I just really don't know if I can commit to at least six months with you. So I think for right now, I'm going to like hold off, but if things change, I'll let you know. I can't tell you how many times people said that to me and how I was able to avoid all of that onboarding and training and time and energy and money because of that simple expectation that I set. And so that's a question that you can ask goes from a good person to a great person. All right. And now lastly, as we kind of round this up, so just to recap, because I love recapping because I've been talking a lot here. The first one is what would you do in a sticky situation? The other one is what does this job mean for your life? What position of life are you in? That's what you're trying to figure out. The third one is how long is your availability going to last? And now the fourth one, drum roll, please. How much do they need to make a month? But Bella, I asked that on my knockout questions or I asked that on the application. Yeah, 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 I know. 
but you need to ask again and again. And then you need to understand what is this money doing in their life? Why do they need this job? What is it going to provide them? Their why is really important to you. And I don't think a lot of employers stop long enough to figure out the why are they doing it? Is it because they just have a heartbeat and I want to hire them and they're like, okay, I'll get a job. Or is it because this job means something to them? Because you want to find the best connecting people you possibly can, because when it means something to them, when they love their job, when they love this line of work, your, your chances of increasing to have like long-term employees goes up. And so can the position you have provide what they're seeking? You know, I mean, it's really obvious if you need to make $2,500 a month, but this job is only a thousand. Guess what that tells me? It tells me that you're going to also have to get a second job if you need to make $2,500 a month. And if they don't know how much they need to make a month, that's concerning. But if they have to get a second job, then guess what that means? Go back to number three, their availability is going to change on you because they're going to have another job. Now you need to ask yourself, where are you on that totem pole? Where are you in that priority list? And so um, will they be working other jobs or only for you? Can you provide them the amount of work to make sure that they only end up working for you, kind of like buying them out um, and give you the availability you'd like? Now, this goes back to avatars, you guys. If you want a free avatar class, it's a three, um, three hours, three one-hour classes. If you go to uh, joinjumpconsulting.com, in there, you're going to be able to sign up for my free three hours webinar where we talk about how to figure out avatars for hiring. And the thing is, is that if you're looking for someone who only wants to make a thousand dollars a month, well, let's think about that. That is clearly not somebody who is paying their own mortgage and all their bills and funding their entire life. This is not a, um, a job where you're going to be making enough money to support a whole family, right? If it's at a thousand dollars, let's just say. So there's got to be other people in the household that they live with that need them or have a say in it. So you're not just hiring them, you're hiring the whole household because they're going to be gone for breakfasts and dinners potentially. And um, those people are all going to have opinions about it, you know? And so you have to figure out how much you need to make a month that opens them you up to their place of life, which is uh, number two. And it, it really helps you understand where they are. And if you have a clear definition of what you're looking for, you're going to be able to use that as a litmus test and be really confident going through the interview process. Now, these questions can be used in all different phases. I always recommend Jazz HR where they post on 15 job boards. They can do their whole entire interview and onboarding for you, which is incredible. It's systematic. Uh, and if you sign up through me, you get 50% off and I give you a job ad and I give you knockout questions. What are knockout questions? You know, all that time that you spend on Indeed going through application after application be like, no, no, no. You get pretty depressed doing that. I'm pretty sure I do. Well, with Jazz HR, you actually have knockout questions. So what are your non-negotiables? So anything that you actually look at, they've already passed your non-negotiables because they've already gotten a rejection letter or not if you set it up that way. And then the next thing is when you set up all of your phases, you might have first phase, I want to test them for customer service. Second phase, I want to test them for communication. Third step, I want to, I want to test them for uh, uh, work ethic. I don't know, whatever that looks like. And you create questions on each one. And with the click of a button, they get going to the next phase. I can't tell you how many hundreds of my clients have been using Jazz HR for three plus years, as long as I've been a partner with them. I even use them to find my nanny. They're that good. So if you guys want more information on that, uh, when it comes to interviewing and questions, just go to jumpconsulting.net forward slash jazz HR. That's jumpconsulting.net forward slash jazz HR. And as a reminder, the jump and scale course, the free jump and scale course, that is joinjumpconsulting.com. So yeah. Ooh, that was a really good episode, you guys. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think about it. Share it with your friends and uh, tell me what more that you want to hear about. Because next week, we're actually going to come back and I'm looking here on my calendar. Ooh, this is a good one. It's going to be seven ways to stand out from your from your competition, from your pet sitting competition. Again, it could be house cleaning competition. It could be whatever you want, but it's standing out from your competition. And I'm going to knock your socks off or your panties off. Uh, and you'll understand that next week on the next episode. You guys, it's been a great day today. 
I really thank you for listening. Um, please remember that when life gets you down, always keep jumping. See you next week.